Hey, it's Nick here from Grayscale Gorilla. I was here the other day cleaning dishes at the office and I looked down at my trusty scrub daddy and thought, I think our new textures may help make a sponge material like this. So of course I had to rush over, open up Cinema 4D and play around with it. I got some pretty cool results using subsurface scattering, redshift displacement, and some of our new pattern textures inside of Grayscale Gorilla Plus. So let's head on into Cinema 4D and let's make some scrub daddies. So the original idea to make these scrub daddy sponges came from these patterns right here. These are some of our new patterns in the MSMC collection in our textures library. And specifically these reaction diffusion kind of uh, assets really give this kind of spongy coral kind of vibe. And I wanted to see if I could recreate a sponge with those in mind. So the first thing I needed to do was of course, model a scrub daddy. Essentially we have some extrudes and we've used the volume builder to subtract the eyeballs and the smile out of the basic shape. And you can see we use some spline masks here to build the basic shapes build the general extrude for the outside of the body. And then of course we used another extrude to make just the uh, eyeball and the, well, the two eyeballs and the smile. I'll show you inside the volume builder where we have an SDF smooth on top, which smooths out the corners. And then we have our two extrudes, one subtracting from the other. So this one is our face, our eyeballs. And you see we have it to subtract from the main shape down below. If I turn these off, you can see we have the bottom shape, the subtraction of the eyeballs, and of course the SDF smooth. Above that, we have the volume mesher, which creates all the mesh here for the scrub daddy. And then we used a remesh to create a lower poly version with way better geometry here. And if you don't wanna model your own scrub daddy, that's okay. You can go grab this model. You can click down below, find a link. It'll be down in the description or below this video, and you can grab this model and get started with the rest of the tutorial right away. Once we had a model we were happy with, I made it its own piece of geometry by right clicking on remesh and going to current state to object. This turned it into a separate mesh that I could then bring into a new scene file and start all the dynamics and material process. Once I threw it into a new scene file, I added some basic lighting. I got a nice bright rim light. This always works great if you're working with subsurface materials like we're about to. We got a back psych light as well, which is just lighting our background. We have a gobo light that is lighting the front face and giving a little bit of shadow detail. And we also have an HDRI that's doing a lot of the heavy lifting with just the general uh, brightness of our scene. We really want this bright for like a kitchen kind of vibe. Now here's the final sponge material and all of its subsurface glory, but I wanted to show you how to set something like this up from scratch. So let's create a new redshift material and we'll delete this one for now and let's just add it to our remesh. I'm gonna double click the material and it should open in the node editor. From here, let's set up our basic subsurface material. Over in your attributes, scroll down to subsurface, click on color and let's pick a nice bright buttery kind of yellow. This will act as our basic subsurface color. Once we have that, Let's go to weight and just crank it all the way up for now. You can see once we have this cranked, we're starting to get this beautiful subsurface scattering effect, which is really a major part of the sponge effect. Under radius, we're gonna pick a slightly brighter buttery color, and this is gonna be how the light is basically soaked into the material. Let's go ahead and pick a slightly brighter color and close it. Now this scale effect is super important. You may wanna turn it down to allow less light to go through your object. I like this look where the light barely comes through, but it still looks like a sponge. Now, the most important part of this material is using displacement. We're gonna use displacement and some of these patterns from the MSMC collection under textures to create a sponge effect and then cut those little holes out of the sponge. So how do we do that? You could either click this plus button or you could hit C on your keyboard and type in displacement. And you can see we have displacement right here. Go ahead and double click it bring it down and you can connect it directly into the output displacement right here. Of course, we need to tell it how we want to displace it. So we could bring in any of these materials here, including this reaction diffusion, just by dragging and dropping it right here in our node editor, and we can connect it directly to our texture map. Boom, we have <laughs> displacement. <laughs> Not exactly what we want, but it is working, folks. If it's not working for you, then you don't have a Redshift object tag. And if you don't have this tag, make sure you have your object selected. Go to Tags, go to Render Tags, click on Redshift Object, then go to Geometry, 
make sure this is turned to override, enabled. Most of these settings should be pretty default except for screen space adaptive, turn that off. Head down here, crank your maximum displacement, and then adjust your displacement scale to taste. So from here, we can of course go into displacement and we could use these change range or the scale to reduce the amount of displacement on our object. But what if we want to combine different maps together and get even more control over the displacement here on our object? Well, that's where we need to use a color layer. So hit C on your keyboard, type in color layer from here, you can start to move any of this stuff around and we're gonna connect the output into the texture map and we're gonna use the color layer to blend a bunch of these together. Let's go ahead and drag our out color into color. We should basically be almost back to where we were before if we just turn off the layer one mask. This essentially will just let basic color come through. And we can now start to layer other displacement maps on top of this. Let's go ahead and scale this one down by selecting it, scrolling down and looking at scale and knocking this way down. Let's go to 10 by 10. This will give us a much more finer detail and make it look a lot more like a sponge. We're getting close. We still need to have a lot of displacement, but we also want this to be very subtle. So this is where we could use a ramp node. Go ahead and bring out a ramp node. In this case, you could dr literally drag it out right on top of this wire because we want it to sit in between. We can now reduce the amount that this is being displaced, mostly by making these ramps closer to the middle. When using displacement, 50% gray is essentially right in the middle of the object. And anything white, I think, goes outside of the object and anything black goes inside. So by making these more subtle, you can see we still have all this nice spongy variation, but we also, it's not too drastic. The main thing we need to do is adjust displacement that goes from zero to one and instead make it go from negative 0.5 to 0.5. This will set the displacement right in the middle of our object and not displace it so heavily out. So in other words, it will go in as much as it goes out. Now that's a good start. There's not enough variation. So the easiest way to solve this is to either use another reaction diffusion at different scales, or you can literally just use the same one and, and scale the difference. I'm gonna go ahead and select both of these, and I'm gonna hold down command as I drag, and I'm going to pump the out color into the layer one color. Let's go back into our color layer, and you can see layer one, we have a color here and the mask is essentially how much of this do you want to input? It's essentially the transparency of the layer. You also wanna select a blend mode like screen, which will at basically add it on top of the other material. Now, since these are the same scale, you really won't see a difference. But if we go into the second reaction diffusion and turn down the scale, make it a little bit larger, maybe four by four, you'll see that it'll start to break up the patterning inside of this object. Now we're talking. So now we have large um, patterns interacting with small patterns, and we could do this over and over again to create organic uh, materials with very similar, very simple shapes. We could reduce the overall displacement effect by adjusting it here on the tag right there under 0.8 or you can go into displacement and adjust it here as well. Let's go ahead and reduce it a little bit more. For the cutouts and holes in the sponges, we're also gonna be using textures, patterns, MSMC. And in this case, let's scroll up and use dots random small. Same as before, we need to bring this in by dragging it into our node editor. It'll make this material and we need to plug this into our layer two under color. We need to go into our color layer and scroll down and turn on our layer two. We also have to select a blend mode. Let's go ahead and select screen since we know that this is made up of a bunch of little dots here, little white dots. Okay, so we definitely have an effect here. We got all these little pimples on our, our sponge. However, this is doing the opposite of what we want. We actually want these holes to be cut into our object instead of being added onto. 
Although this is its own gross effect that I now wanna use somewhere else. Well, we have to convert these little white dots into little black dots because remember, black displacement cuts out the holes, white displacement pushes out of the object. We could do that with a ramp, same as we did before. Let's go ahead and hit C, type in ramp, and drag it right on top of this little wire. Inside of the ramp, we could literally just click invert. This will create the holes. Now, I think I need slightly larger holes. Uh, we may have to layer this. So let's go into our dots random. And in this case, instead of scaling it even closer, let's make it uh, a little bigger by typing 0 0.4, 0 0.4. Now we're talking, but what's missing? Well, our original texture is missing. Where in the heck did it go? Well, you remember inside of our layers, we selected the blend mode screen, which essentially adds only white to whatever you have below it. In this case, we want it to do the opposite. Let's go ahead and click multiply. Now we're getting somewhere. And just like before, we can layer these to create even more detail. First, we go into our color layer, turn on layer three, and we need to connect that. Same as before, we can hold down command, drag out a new set. From here, you can connect layer three by clicking the out color. Now, where is layer three? I see layer two, just let go. And you'll see this menu that'll show layer three right here and put it into the color channel. Just like before, we have to select our blend mode. Let's go to multiply, just like we did on the last one. And we can also adjust the volume essentially of how much these holes are getting cut in and out of our object. Of course, we need to scale this one differently. Let's select it and let's go ahead and do a higher number to make more little holes inside of this object. Now we're getting somewhere folks. And if you wanna adjust how much displacement, click your displacement and you could adjust it right here, right inside of this node. Now my final material ended up needing a ton of layers. But now that you know the basics, you can see how something like this was built. Here's the final material. Let's go ahead and drag it onto our scrub daddy so we can look at it right inside the viewport. You can see I had way less of that reaction diffusion material on there at a lot higher scale and some larger holes as well. Now, obviously this is a lot more layers than the one we just made, but the basics are the same. We have a color layer here with multiple different layers and all of these come from our Patterns MSMC and a few of them even come from our other surface imperfections. Now might be a good time to let you know that all Plus members have access to download and use this scene file. Thanks for watching everybody. You can get the original scene file if you're a Plus member with all the materials, all the lighting ready to go for you to pick apart and learn from and use in your next project. And with that, I wanted to thank you so much for joining us today and we will see you in another video really soon. Bye everyone.